Hello, Sigmas. If you try solving the questions of work, energy, and power from any of the physics books, then you will find that most questions are based on the concepts of work and energy, and the power is abandoned. But today, I have brought for you this so very interesting problem from the concept of power. So, without any further ado. Let's get right into it. What we have in today's question is uh, ground, right? And uh, from this ground, we have uh, projected a particle with a initial velocity v naught, making an angle alpha with the ground or with the horizontal. And what you need to find in this uh, problem, right? What we need to find is the uh, first. We need to find the mean power developed by gravity over the whole time. of a motion of the body right we need to find the mean power that will be developed by gravity over the whole time of motion of the body mean power is uh, the average of power and uh, second what you need to find is the instantaneous power of gravity as a function of time. Now as you can easily see this uh, problem uses the concepts from my video on power and from my video on projectile motion. So do check those uh, videos out. I will put the link in the comments. So you access those links and check out these videos because I will be using concepts from these videos. And if you haven't watched those videos, you will not understand uh, anything what I will be doing to solve this problem. And once you have uh, watched that video or uh, those two videos, that is my video on power and my video on projectile motion, I want you to try this problem out yourself first. And only if you are not able to solve this problem, even after trying for half an hour or an hour, then uh, return back, resume this uh, video, and uh, watch the solution. Even if you were able to solve the problem, do check if uh, what you have solved is correct, and uh, if uh, my way of solving the problem it matches your method of solving the problem. So let us uh, quickly get to the solution of the problem. Right, the solution. What I will be doing is solving the second question first. Now it is not necessary that you need to solve the first question first and the second question second. What I will be doing is solving the second question first. And if you're asking why, you will get your answer soon once I'm done solving the second question. I'm going to begin solving the first question but for now i will keep it a secret a suspense and let us quickly get into solving the second question so what we need to do is solve the second question first and hence we need to find the instantaneous power that uh, the gravity will develop as a function of time so this power is a scalar that is because you know that it is the dot product of force and velocity. That is the definition of instantaneous power. And what is the, the force on the projectile motion? There is only one force on the projectile motion and that is gravity. So let me say that the mass of the projectile is m, then the force on it will be minus mgg cap. And uh, from a video on projectile motion, you know that the velocity of the projectile at any instant of time 
can be uh, given by v naught uh, cos alpha i cap plus v naught sin alpha minus g t j cap right over here since the projectile was thrown with a velocity v naught that's why its component in the x direction will be v naught cos alpha and its component in the y direction will be v naught sin alpha and now what i'm going to do is substitute the force and the velocity back into this equation we are going to substitute it back so that my instantaneous power is equal to minus mg j cap dot v which is v naught cos alpha i cap plus v naught sin alpha minus g t j cap now the dot product of j with i is zero and hence what we will get is minus mg v naught sin alpha minus g t because the dot product of j with j is one right so we will be left with this as the instantaneous power and that is exactly what our second question was we had to find the instantaneous power of uh, gravity as a function of time and this is exactly our answer to that question now the reason i solved the second question first is that i will be using this answer of the second question to solve my first question i will be using this to solve my first question how let me quickly tell you so in the first question what we have to do is uh, find the mean power that is developed by gravity over its uh, course of uh, flight that is uh, as the projectile completes its flight we need to find the mean power that will be developed by gravity in that time now mean just means uh, average and uh, what we have to find the average of power some people write it like this but uh, i am uh, very used to quantum mechanics right so i am i have used this uh, symbol you can say to represent averages so much that uh, now even if i try writing it this way i cannot help in further steps uh, as i go with the flow i might uh, start writing average like this because i have the habit of writing average in that manner right so this is uh, exactly the same as this that is also uh, a re these are just the representations of a mean or average right so this is just a representation of average in quantum mechanics it is known as the expectation value but these are just uh, fancy names uh, at the core it is just the average and in fact uh, i am getting far from what i started but expectation value is a, a very stupid term to give it because it is not the value that we expect average value is not the expect we expect most probable value right the particle mostly has the most probable value of velocity energy so actually that should be there what we expect but uh, for historical reason this average is known as expectation value uh, that that is not what we should be concerned about in this video let me get back to our problem so over here we need to find the average value of power and uh, any average value in physics is defined in this manner over time right this is how average value is defined over time we have an integral from 0 to t where t is the time of flight so t is nothing but the time of flight so we have the integral from 0 to t p t dt divided by the total time of flight right this is how you take a mean value you have the sum 
right uh, over uh, some values right x1 x2 x3 so you take the sum and then what you do is uh, divide by the total number of terms that is how you take mean value but over here the power or the instantaneous power of the projectile is changing continuously over time and you know from experience from whatever i have taught you so far in this channel that when we move from discrete to continuous systems the sum becomes the integer and hence what we have over here is exactly that the power over its course of flight that is from time zero to the total time of flight divided by the total time of flight so i have not done anything new i just converted the sum into an integer and we have uh, already calculated what uh, p of t is right in our first uh, or oh, sorry it was the second question that we had done so you know that is the reason why i had done the second question first right so i'm just going to use that result over here so i will be left with 1 by t and uh, integral from uh, 0 to t p of t was minus mg uh v not sin alpha minus gt right this is what our p of t was integrated over dt and that would be equal to 1 by t minus mg is a constant so let me take it out of the integration and the integral of v not sin alpha again is a constant so i will be left with v not sin alpha t minus uh, a small t minus gt squared divided by t from 0 to t that is i have just integrated with respect to time and now what i'm going to do is substitute the upper limit if i substitute the lower lower limit you can see that i get just get zero so i'm not going to do that what i'm going to do is substitute the upper limit so i will be left with v not sin alpha t minus g t square by t and now you can see that this t will get cancelled with this and the square will go So I'll be left with minus mg v not sin alpha minus g by t. Now what is the the time of flight? We already know the expression for time of flight from our video on projectile motion. The time of flight is nothing but two v not sin alpha divided by g. And what I'm going to do is just substitute that over there. So I'm just going to substitute this t over here. and that would give me 2v not sin alpha divided by g you can easily see that this 2 cancels with g cancels and i will get the average value of power as a minus mg v not sin alpha minus oh there's just v not sin alpha left there and that would imply that the mean power or the average power developed by gravity in the course of flight is zero right we have solved so much just to get zero but the result is pretty obvious right how can the particle lifts off from the ground and returns back to the ground so how can gravity create anything its velocity changes its direction in the course and uh, there are many things happening like that but our intuition told us that uh, the average power developed by gravity has to be zero and it is just that it is zero and that is all we had to find in this question to motivate me to make more such interesting uh, videos on various concepts in physics and uh, to bring more such interesting problems do subscribe to my channel and do not forget to like this video I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.